guess what we're making. Dulce de leche pecan pie. I dressed like a pecan for the occasion. I have been on what feels like a lifelong quest to figure out how to make pecan pie without corn syrup. And I will admit that to date, um, every time I've tried, the version I've made has made me miss the version with corn syrup because corn syrup gives body. That's why you use it. It really is responsible for that wonderful, springy, luscious, toffee filling that creates memorable pecan pies. Today, we are departing from corn syrup and we are instead making dulce de leche. Dulce de leche literally means candy from milk. And here's the deal with this recipe. It is decadent. It is glorious. It is gonna smell and perfume your house like the most insane vanilla heaven ever. You are gonna love it, but you must be patient. Although this recipe technique wise is really simple, I promise, it does require you to like have a couple annoyingly long wait periods, primarily to make the dulce de leche, which you get. There's a couple different methods actually you can bake this. There, I'll let you research online if you don't feel like doing it the way I'm showing you. But what we're going to do today is take the label off this can of sweetened condensed milk and stick it in a pot of simmering water. Cover it. Make, always, 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 always make sure your um, can is covered by at least a couple inches of water. It's very important. Simmering the whole time for two and a half hours. I told you. It's, you don't have to do anything during two and a half hours. You just have to watch it and make sure the water level doesn't go too low. Um, and then at the end of that, you will let the can cool and then you will open the can and inside will be dulce de leche delightfulness. I'll be honest, once I knew we were making this recipe, I got up and put the can in early because I didn't want to have to wait two and a half hours while we were cooking together. So come and see. I'll let you imagine taking the wrapper off carefully putting it in a pot of cold water, bringing it up to a boil, dropping it to a simmer, and here is what's going on. It's been in there for a while now. I've filled it with water a few times. I go, I mean, obviously this is an extravagantly, unnecessarily large pot to do this in. Do it in a, any size pot that will fit your can. And um, yeah, just keep it simmering away. Two and a half hours. While that is going, Let's make the pie dough. When I've had bad pecan pie, it started with the pie dough. Pie dough that was gummy, pie dough that wasn't crisp, pie dough that was too sweet. Pecan pie is the most incredibly sweet filling, so the dough, I think, needs to be pretty savory, not a ton of sugar, not any sugar in the version I'm gonna show you, <laughs> which doesn't mean this is a light recipe, just gonna put it out there. I have shown you a few times how to make pie dough by hand with just pinching the shards of butter throughout the flour mix, and that's a gorgeous, easy way to do it if you don't have a food processor. I'm gonna show you how to do it in a food processor today because it is so simple to make pie dough um, using this piece of equipment. Okay, so to make this ultra tender, flaky, buttery crust, it takes very few ingredients. Um, we are gonna start with actually a cup and a quarter of all-purpose flour. And just make sure you kind of fluff up the flour in the bag so it's not settling into your cup so you don't accidentally overmeasure. A teaspoon of kosher salt or a half teaspoon of sea salt if that's what you're using. And a little salt in this crust goes a long way, my friends. It is a really important balancing act for the extreme sweetness of the filling. A few quick pulses just to distribute the salt through the flour. I am just going to give a quick chop to this 10 tablespoons of butter. Add your butter working quickly. You know, the food processor has the benefit of not exposing um, the dough to the heat from your hands. Although if you let the motor run, it does generate heat. So you want to work quickly and you know, take the butter out right before you're ready to use it from the fridge so that it stays cold as long as possible. And try to break those little cubes up so that they don't accidentally get stuck together. You, what you're aiming for as we process this butter is sort of a, like a little pea-sized grains of butter distributed throughout the flour so you get what is then going to create little pockets of steam as the dough cooks to create that ultra tender flaky crust that we love. Pulsing. Don't let it work. Pulse, pulse, pulse. Okay, come see first so you see what it starts looking like once I've coated the butter in that flour mix. Okay, and then here's what it's gonna look like when it's pea-sized and sandy. Perfect, okay, come see. Gorgeous little distrib distributions of the butter throughout the flour. Nice and cold, very cold. 
Okay, now comes the little bit of liquid addition. We are going to add a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar, and this really helps to tenderize the dough, make it really flaky and crisp. One tablespoon, it also adds just the tiniest bit of acidity, which cooks off for the most part, but I like just the hint of it since that filling is so sweet. And then we're gonna start with two tablespoons of our ice water, working our way up to probably four tablespoons of ice water, depending on how quickly your dough comes together. And I kind of just let it whir for a couple seconds. That's the best indication of whether it's wet enough. If it starts to pull away and gather into a ball here in the food processor, I added my third tablespoon of water. And see, it pulled completely away from the sides of the food processor when I let it run just those couple seconds. And that's how I know I didn't need to add the fourth tablespoon of water. It is already beautiful, pliable, not too sticky. And I'm going to gather it into a disc and then let this chill in the fridge for half an hour before I roll it and put it into my pie dish. I have a little flour here on the board um, and you don't wanna overwork it at this point. You do wanna let that butter stay as pebbly as possible, though that little whir in the uh, processor did um, distribute it a little bit more evenly. And I like to press my round out kind of thin and flat because it just helps me when I then go to roll the dough out. It makes it as easy as possible to get that moving. Grab some plastic wrap and place your dough round down here. Just give it a quick little wrap, nothing too special. It's just going to have a little time out in the fridge until we're ready to roll. All right, so our dough has been in the fridge about 30 minutes. It should be nice and chill by now. You can also tuck it in the freezer if that's easier for you or you have more room there. The point is you just want it nice and firm so it's not flopping over. Um, you want the butter to have chilled again so that we are going to have the easiest time possible working with it on our surface. And I have my pie dish ready to go. Just give your roller a nice little coat with the flour and start rolling it out. Once I got a little floury, just so you don't make the dough too tough, I do kind of brush it off um, before I flip it to the next side. But remember to keep flipping your dough every once in a while so you don't get a perfectly rolled round and then find yourself completely incapable of pulling it off of your rolling surface. I kind of work from the center of my dough out to try to make it as even as possible. And I'm looking for a diameter of about 11 inches to make sure this is gonna fit my pie form beautifully. Oh yes, this dough is looking lovely. This looks nice and even. Again, the trick with making beautiful pies, which those of you who've been with me for a while know I have had a couple rants about pies in my time because they are temperamental. Like as desserts go, pies are actually something that does require some skill um, to really like nail it. Really special, beautiful pies are made by people who really understand how to work quickly and manage the dough and all the rest. But I would say one of the big tricks is actually just that, working quickly, because the thing that will really trip you up is when the butter starts to melt and then you get like gummy dough that's not ideal. Um, roll your dough over your rolling pin to help, um, to help you lift it and then just lay it back down into your pie dish. And then I just gently kind of lift it and tuck it to make sure that there's no air pockets here, especially um, in the pie dish itself. You really want the pie dough settled into all these little corners and edges. Um, and you can see there's a little bit of overhang, which is not a problem. You're just going to take scissors, take a knife, and trim it around so that you have not too much extra. And then you can actually just leave it like that or you can tuck it in and do a little fluted edge, which is pretty too. Give it a little haircut, you know. And so then you just wanna, I like just this little lip you can create by tucking the um, farthest side toward the center of the pie. And then I go around and just sort of Give it a quick little crimp if you feel so inclined. 
And then this also has to go into the fridge to chill. Again, to let that butter cool back down. And you can leave it in the fridge until you're ready to go with the filling. Let the condensed milk chill. Let all the other things happen. This can hang out in the fridge for a couple hours if you need it to. So also something you can do ahead if you'd like. So now the pecans in the pecan pie. You can definitely leave them raw. Totally great. That's how I made pecan pie forever and ever. I have recently started toasting my pecans, giving them a little time in the oven or in a skillet um, over the stove just to give them a little crispness and a little like golden browning. Um, it just builds the flavor even more. It's a step you can skip if you don't have time. Although frankly, you're sitting here waiting for this condensed milk for ever and ever, so you have time. Especially putting them in the oven, which I'm gonna do today. It's another kind of set it and forget it. This whole recipe is a lot of set it and forget it and just like time management situations. Two cups of pecans, um, and these are whole uh, halves. So I'm just gonna spread them on a baking sheet. I'm gonna put them in a 350 degree oven Honestly, until they start to smell really nutty and buttery. I'll start checking them probably around like five, six minutes. Give them a little shake. Keep them going in there until they're nice and, um, and golden and fragrant. And then I will let them cool and half of them I'll chop up and that will go in the sort of batter, the filling of the pecan pie. And then half I will arrange lovely, beautifully on the surface of our bag. This condensed milk has finally been in the water for two and a half hours, guys. And it is time to take it out very carefully. So as you can see, I've kept the water level above the can the whole time, super, super critical. Fish out your extraordinarily hot can of condensed milk. And we are just going to leave it here on the side. And then once it is completely cool, do not open it before then. Once it is completely cool, we will open it and make the rest of our pecan pie filling. Moment of truth. Excuse me. That is a good can of luscious caramelized sugar and milk. Dulce de leche. We're gonna scrape that into a large bowl. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Are we gonna spread this on toast? Are we gonna pour that over ice cream sundaes? Are we gonna put that on French toast in yogurt? Drizzled into brownies? No, we're gonna put it in a dulce de leche pecan pie. But thanks for asking. Um, it has to happen. I'm so sorry. It does. It has to happen. Why? Why don't we eat this all the time? Wow, that's dangerous. You sh don't don't make this if you don't want to eat it. Do not keep it around. Oh my gosh, this is like so. First of all, texture. Um, unbelievable like so silky creamy yummy it's gonna give the most incredible body to our um, pecan pie filling and all things considered yes it was annoying to wait but quite easy mm. how is it already salty I'm distracted excuse me <laughs> so it is quite thick we want to loosen the batter up just a little bit with some evaporated milk so that it still has enough liquid in there for the pie to finish cooking over the course of like 40 to 50 minutes without setting up too much. You still want that luscious oozing toffee filling that you get when you use the more, more traditional um, pecan pie filling ingredients. So the evaporated milk is just that. It's been simmered a little bit, heated so that some of the liquid evaporates away. It's a more concentrated milky flavor, but still has plenty of movement. So we're gonna create a really nice batter for the filling in our pecan pie. I'm gonna go in with half a cup packed of light brown sugar, two eggs. My trick is I just sort of put them to the side and you'll see I whisk them together quickly before incorporating into the rest of the wet mix. I'm gonna grab a splash of vanilla extract. I almost always go to two teaspoons. I know a lot of recipes are just one teaspoon, but I find a little bit more is actually preference, my preference. And then before I add the salt, I break up the egg yolk and then I just sort of whisk them together on the side over here. It's not perfect, but it minimizes my cleanup, which I like. And then we're just gonna start by just gently swirling, trying to protect the pecan sweater. And we just wanna incorporate that thick, velvety dulce de leche into the custard mix here. Do go ahead and whisk this for like a minute, mainly just to build a little body into the eggs um, and just distribute all the ingredients. 
It's not gonna get perfectly smooth because you have these little tiny pieces of the dulce de leche that still need time to melt into the batter. Don't worry, that will happen as the pie heats up, the custard cooks, everything will melt and infuse together. You just want it as distributed as possible. So once it looks like that, which looks delicious, we're gonna add a teaspoon of kosher salt. Again, layering in those delightful flavors. Sweet, salty, yum. And now it's time for the pecans. So remember, we toasted them up. I think it took, I wasn't totally timing. Um, I was more smelling for when they were really roasty and nutty and delicious. Um, it was quick though, like five to eight minutes at 350 degrees. But trust your nose, just gonna put it out there. Sometimes ovens are temperamental, nuts can roast at different times too, depending on how fresh they are and everything. So trust your nose. If they smell like they're burning, take them out. And half of these I want to chop up to add to our mix here. And then half I'm gonna leave to scatter whole uh, over top of the pie. Now you can choose to take this chop as tight as you want. Um, I like to leave a little texture just because the custard itself is obviously so rich and smooth and creamy. It's kind of nice to have a little tender bite with the pecans. Once we've got everything nice and just broken up roughly, then we'll go ahead and slide these into the batter. I feel like I want more than that. I feel like I'm, I feel like I might want all of these and then maybe I'll put some more fresh pecans on top because I like it very nutty in there, you know? We'll see. Let's play. Oh, toasty, roasty pecans. Smell so good. Um, into our custard mix. Give that a quick stir. And now here's one little trick that we didn't actually do. When your oven is preheating, you actually wanna pop your sheet tray in at the same time and let the metal come up to nice high heat. What that's gonna do is two things. Number one, you're gonna put your pie onto the sheet tray when you go into the oven, which is gonna help in case there's any spills, bubbling over, it's a much more stable surface, easy to carry, et cetera. Also, the heat from the then hot tray will rise up as your pie is baking and help to evenly cook the crust. So we get tender, crisp, lacy, buttery, delicious crust that we want, perfectly cooked custard filling, all done in like 40 to 50 minutes in a 350 degree oven. But now I have to wait for the pan to heat because I forgot to do that. So give me like 10 minutes. Since I forgot to put the pan in when I was preheating the oven, I have 10 minutes for it to preheat now. I'm gonna add some more pecans onto this tray so that it, we're it's called multitasking, um, because I do want some toasty ones to throw on top of our pie. Just another two handfuls or so. Okay. So while we're waiting, we are gonna make a really quick little egg wash, which is just one egg and did you see that it's the little things the little thrills in life one egg and just a splash of water like a tablespoon or so and that's just going to create a really loose little varnish for the crust of our pecan pie so that it seals beautifully gets a really golden brown crisp exterior a little glossy and you just want to give it a good whisk so that the yolk and the white come together with the water and then one of these days I will have a pastry brush, but once again, I don't. So you can either use your fingers, although you wanna be careful not to put too much egg wash on or it gets a little gloopy, or you can use a paper towel, which is what I will be doing today. You want to get nice and sort of frothy like that, a little bubbly. Perfect. All right, let's get our now hot baking sheet out of the oven these lovely hot pecans that we gently roasted in the oven. We really earned this moment, I feel. We took our time, we baked from scratch. We are putting a cold crust onto a hot pan. So we have to work quickly now, adding in our beautiful custard. Mm -mm -mm. Loosely scatter the whole ones over top so that you have that nice appearance of the full halves. This is going to be an extremely pecan -y pecan pie. Get your paper towel and kind of just crinkle it up a little bit, right? So it's not super tight. You want 
kind of making a little sponge situation. And then we are going to just quickly kind of brush this over the exterior of our crest. We're trying not to like be too heavy handed or um, create big drips here. We don't, you know, we do ideally want it to get into the nooks and crannies, but we don't want to create a um, really eggy finish. Just sort of paint it into the little belly buttons. And this is another reason why it's good to have your crest have time to cool because um, you don't want it sort of ruining its beautiful shape with this addition of liquid. If the crust starts to brown too quickly while the pie is baking, we can go ahead and cover it with a little tin foil, make a little cap for it, but hopefully that's not necessary. Remember the tray is hot. Don't fool yourself. I have done that before and tried to pick it up. Into our 350 degree oven. Wow, 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 that is gorgeous. Close it up, do not disturb. At least 40 minutes, probably closer to 50. What we're looking for is the center of the pie will be just a little jiggly, but like mostly set up. We're gonna take it out and let it cool. It'll finish cooking. So soon, so soon. So the pie has been in for 45 minutes and I came over here to check on it to see if it was ready to pull out because it smells delicious. And I want you to see what I saw. We're gonna work fast because I don't wanna release all the heat from the oven, but the crust is getting gorgeous and golden brown. But then look what happens when I shake it. We got all that wiggle situation happening, which means it's not ready yet. Um, I did just rotate the pan at the like 25 minute mark just to make sure we're getting even heating throughout and around the pie. We're gonna give it another five minutes. We'll check again, another five minutes, check again until it is perfectly set. It can be a little wiggly in the middle, but not doing that fun little dance we just saw. We'll check back. The pie has been in for 54 minutes. I've been watching it like a hawk. It is perfect. The center is beautifully set up. The crust is crisp and golden brown. The surface is crackling with caramelized sugar perfection. <laughs> and I am so ready for us to try this Dulce de Leche Pecan Pie. So I'm going to set it on um, just a cooling rack, get it off the hot surface of the pan. So I am gonna let it rest 15 minutes and you know I generally am averse to waiting but I do want the custard to have a chance just to settle into the mold of the pie, cool and firm just a little bit, and we'll cut into it and see what's going on on the inside. But I'm very proud of this. I have to tell you, pies and I have fought sometimes. We have really done battle in the kitchen, and I am really, really excited about this pie. Okay, we can do it. We're gonna wait. I'll see you in 10. Let's see what's going on here before I break in. Look at how crisp and crackly the surface of this pie got. Oh my goodness. First, before I take a bite, just, just look at what's happening here. Look at this beautiful, like tender pudding consistency inside the crackly sugar top. All those pecans. Oh my gosh, are you kidding? Mmm. Let's try the crust. Mm. So Thanksgiving, I find, is not a time to experiment because, typically, because people are really looking forward to the meal and the dishes that they only get to enjoy once a year, unless you are the family doing Thanksgiving more often, in which case, hello, <laughs> let's get to know each other. Um, but I will say that what people are excited about is slight innovation on those dishes. Perfect example is pecan pie. Everyone's had pecan pie. We love pecan pie. There's nothing wrong with pecan pie. But when you give me a little something that just surprises me and tantalizes the taste buds and feels a little novel uh, as part of the still incredibly reminiscent, amazing food memories experience that I want to tie it to, then it's really a winner. So happy Thanksgiving. I hope you feel radically confident and like an extreme domestic goddess after this week of cooking. And I cannot wait to see all your Thanksgiving feasts. And um, gobble, gobble. Mm.